Welcome everyone. Uh, we are so grateful that God has given us this opportunity where we can review our lesson. And before we do that, uh, let's have uh, introduce from there, ma'am. Uh, my name is Sabina Pariñas. I'm uh, working at the research office as research consultant here at Adventist University of the Philippines. Although I am a nurse, but I am working at the research office at the moment. Thank you. I am Michelle Coriado. I'm coming from College of Education as a chair for elementary department. Thank you. My name is Pastor Ismail Cabazon. I'm one of the instructors in the College of Theology. I'm Rico Habien. I'm a teacher in College of Theology in the Graduate School and the College of Medicine. And so, our lesson this week is very significant because the title is The Christian and Work. Uh, it is not separated, it is attached, it's associated. When you are a Christian, there is work. So, our lesson tells us first that work is God's ideal. But before we go into that, we will look at the text for our week study. So, I would like Dr. Coliado to first to read... Uh, Genesis 3, 19, and Deuteronomy 16, 15. Okay. From Genesis chapter 3 to 9 and 19. In the sweat of the face, thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for, art, for out of what dost taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And from Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 15. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless therein all thine increase and in all thy works of thine hands. Therefore, thou shalt surely rejoice. Pastor Cabason, Exodus 20, 25 verses 10 to 30. 10 to 30, sir? Yeah. Says here, and they shall make an ark of shittim wood, two cubits, and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. In this, in thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shalt thou overlay, overlay it, and it shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of the city mood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark, that the ark may be born with them. The staves shall be in the rings in the ark. They shall put, be taken from it. And they shall put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. And thou shalt make a mercy seat in pure gold. Two cubits in a half shall be the length thereof. And a cubit in a half the breadth thereof. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. And beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the end, and the other cherub on the other end, even of the mercy seat shall ye make 
the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall be stretched forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubims be. Up to? 21. Galatians 5. I'm reading from uh, King James Version. Galatians 5, verses 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hands find it to do, do it with your might. For... There is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. And 1 Corinthians 10, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all for the glory of God. Now our, our uh, lesson is giving us things. First, simple. And then when we listen to the Exodus, it's more complicated more detailed, minute, because it comes from God. Meaning to say, all our work is really from a simple to more complex. And we should work. This is what it says. And we are also say uh, it encourages us to work with all our hands. And the end of the work, the motive of our work is that we do all for the glory of God. Now, let's start first. Our memory text says, Therefore, beloved, brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Now, God has given this idea of work. Dr. Coliado, what can you, what did you understand that God has given us this idea of work before sin. Because from our lesson, it talks about pre-fall. So when, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, so they, God uh, commanded them to take care of the garden. The animals there, so that was, that was the way, the work it should be before the fall. But after sin, the work become more painful. Okay, they have to sweat it from their sweat from their body. So that's how the work evolved through time from the pre-fall then after the sin. So I think personally the work for me is a blessing for now. Yeah. Still a blessing. Yes, yeah, still a blessing. After after the fall. After the even fall. though it's a there's a pain, there's a hardship on that kind of work, it's still a blessing for me. Okay? Uh, Pastor Cabason in the world in the world where there is no sin where there is no tiredness of working why god allow us to give us to work adam and eve yeah we have considered that work is a gift or a blessing coming from god doing our responsibility or our work in the right manner becomes a blessing to us personally. So God wanted us to, to enjoy the blessings because God is developing in us the character like Him. God is a God of labor. You can read that in Genesis 1 that He worked and part of that uh, responsibility given to men as steward is to keep and to dress the Garden of Eden. Okay, thank you. Dr. Parinias, in a world full of everything, 
It seems nothing to be worked at all because God provided. But why is it God tell us that we need to work because that is his ideal? Uh, can you bring some thoughts in a world where we don't need anything? It is everything is provided. What is really the, the, the intention of our maker that we need to work? Um, in Genesis 2.15, it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress and keep it. As we all know that God's character, he's a God of order, he's a God of love. So, in the process of doing this work of keeping and dressing the garden, I believe that how delightful um, Adam could be. Looking around, managing all the vegetation, the animals, and like the creator in whose image they were made, they were to be employed in creative labor and loving service. So God being a God of love, Adam also needs to love. It is part also of his character, extension of God's character, to love um, other creation created by God in the Garden of Eden. And in the process, like uh, Pastor Cabason said, they will experience the blessing of working for the Lord. Okay, thank you. So, what we have to wrap up it. Meaning to say, God worked on the first day, second, third, fourth, six days. And so, he wants it, he worked not only for the entire universe, for humanity, but also to model what he created as human. And because he worked, so naturally that is God's ideal, naturally humans should work because that is really the, perf uh, the, the reflection of the ideal of the maker. Okay? So, let's go to the attitude of working. Let, let's go to Adam and Eve. Okay? Let's go to their attitude. So, before sin, the attitude of work is, is not like today. Right? Because in a, in, in a sinless world, work is joy right so we have read that in ecclesiastes i think i have to read that in ecclesiastes is in our lesson uh, it says in our lesson i know that there's nothing better for people to be happy okay one what's that to be happy to do good okay to do good while they live and each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in their toil, it is the gift of God. Did you remember that the maker was so busy as a model that his copy, because the image could be translated copy, but not really as God, but they reflect the character of God. So here, number one, Solomon, who was wise, he says, people to be happy, how many today are happy with their work? <laughs> okay, okay. Are you happy with your work? Yes, I am. I enjoy my work. But sometimes, uh, even, if, even for the work that you enjoy and you're happy doing, when um, it is too much already, it is, it is not already enjoyable. <laughs> but then I would like to, to add to that the verse in Ecclesiastes 3, 12 to 13. Notice that I noticed this a while ago that uh, the first step is for the peop it is better for the people than to be happy and to do good. Meaning, those who do good are the happy people. When you are happy, that's the only time that you can do good. So this, this is what I understood from this verse. This is my reflection. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good. To be happy first, then to do good. To be excellent in work. I believe that's the case even today. When you are happy doing your work, 
you can perform well. Because it is not heavy, it, it is not drudgery. You enjoy what you're doing. So those people who enjoy what they're doing, they tend to perform better. Because they love what they're doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mom Culiado, Sister Culiado, there is a uh, next verse. It says, to them to be happy and do good to their lives. So, the question is, when we work, we should be happy and we will do good with our lives. Did you understand these two are closely associated? So, how many of our works today that we are happy and doing good with our lives? But other people, you know, when they work, most of the, most of the time, they go to the hospital. Because number one is the attitude is not good. Right? And the work is not rewarding because it seems not significant. And a recent research I know, 60 or higher percentage of people work but actually they don't happy but that is the available work. So how would you understand that uh, Mam Culiado in the, the, in the area where you need to be happy and do good to your life. Meaning to say, when you are happy, you can do good to your life. Right? So, meaning to say, work should not destroy us. Work should not destroy us. Yes, I will read from Psalms 90, verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. So it's very clear here that the work is an evidence of our obedience, our love to God. So how would God know that we are obeying Him if it doesn't see in your work, in any kind of work, even though you're a carpenter, you're a barber, you're a teacher, you're a nurse, you're a pastor. So how would God know that you are working for Him, that your main purpose is to be a blessing to other people? And... It depends on your motive why you are working. That's very important from this verse. That God, if God, if you believe that that we believe as a Christian, that God blesses the work, and work is a blessing to us, and we as a Christian, as believers, we have to do what God's will. Like what uh, Mom being read a while ago, the fruits of Holy Spirit from Galatians, it should be seen to us as an evidence that our work is to glorify God. Okay, thank Pastor, you. Pastor, I would like to relate that in evangelism and witnessing. The more you love to do witnessing, the more your faith is strengthened. Because when you witness, you study your Bible so that you can share the truths, the truth of the Bible, then it becomes a blessing to you. It's do, it will bring good to you because you will deepen your Bible study, your understanding about God. And the more you witness, the more you tell about Jesus, the more you share about Jesus to others, the happier you are, and the more you are being strengthened and encouraged. Okay. So, let me put this, because actually this is the philosophy that God wants us to understand. Work happy, then your lives do, do good with your lives, and then be satisfied with what you eat and drink. But the last one is this, because it is the gift of God. This is the problem where many Christians did not understand. That our work is a gift from God. Okay? Because, so I wear I'm my heart because of my talent. No. Yes, but as I said, research shows higher percentage of people who work not because that is their, their gift, but that is the available work that they need to fit in in order to survive for existence. Yes, for necessity. Oh, so, it's a gift. So, meaning to say, when this idea we understand that it is a gift, whatever is our work, I don't know if you agree with me, whether you are a janitor, that's a gift from God. As a driver, it's a gift from God. So, you add more. Uh, Dr. Parinas, uh, uh, as a gift, because we need to understand, we need to let our brothers and sisters, even you are a, a tailor, or you are a storekeeper, or you are la bandera, or what, you need to understand, it's a gift from God. 
Okay? So, how do we treat this gift? Um, when we, when somebody chooses a profession, I believe that God has placed in one's heart the burden of serving through that profession. It is a calling. It is beyond being an employee. So if you're a nurse, for me, I took a nurse. In fact, I wanted to become a doctor when I was in grade four. I usually write that in our, uh, what's that? Theme? Formal theme. theme. <laughs> I always say there, I want to be a doctor because I want to serve the poor. I ended up being a nurse. And when I, was, I became a nurse, I enjoyed my work because every time I care for a patient, I know that I'm making someone's life a little bit better in the hospital. Doing the best that I can as a professional nurse, knowing that I am serving a patient, and I am doing it, extending the healing ministry of Jesus in the hospital. So meaning, uh, when we receive that uh, calling, gift. it is a gift. And you pursued it. And while you do that work, you enjoy it. Because you know that you are serving the Lord. Because um, our profession actually are our calling. No one pursues a I don't know if others' point of view, um, young people who pursue their career but just because of money, but I believe that people will not pursue something which doesn't satisfy them. So it is a calling. It is beyond being an employee. That when we do our work, we cannot separate it serving the Lord. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, Dr. Culiado, you are a teacher at education. Do you love your work as a gift of God? How would you relate it to your students that being a teacher is a gift from God? Yes, uh, that's one thing that we need to possess even though I'm, I'm really a teacher by profession. But one thing that I'm always telling them that being an educator, you should not be satisfied with a second-rate work. And that's what was be found in Education Chapter 2, or Chapter 4. It means to say, as a teacher, we, we need to instill to the minds of the student that they have to give their best in any requirements because it's the gift from God. Any kind of work is a gift from God. So if we consider that the requirements are a burden to you, you are not uh, grateful to the gift that your parents receive from God, they send you to a prestigious school, to an Adventist University of the Philippines, or any kind of school, because everything that you do it should be centered to the Lord. So I think as an educator, we need to always go back to the source of everything, and that is Him. Okay. Okay. I would like to add, as, as the role of educator, it was also mentioned in our lesson, that part of the role of a teacher, from the beginning, I believe, that uh, the teacher has the big role in leading young people like for example in undergrad in college or in senior high as early as senior high and going to college before they take their program they enroll we have a big role to lead young people to the gift that god has given them aligned to the work that they will pursue so i hope we will not miss that point in our schools. The reason why we do assessment, uh, psycholo psychological test at the beginning of college life is we need to know what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses in terms of academic interest among our uh, new uh, students in, in college. But it should begin not in college when they are there about to enroll. It should begin while they are senior high. They are already uh, given the choice and the guidance what program to choose because the teacher, the Adventist Christian teacher, has already seen in that student the gift that is fitted leading to that proper or appropriate program that, that needs to be taken by a certain student. Okay, thank you. We need to understand that really 
work start at home because that's the first place of education. And yet, we need to tell our parents, especially those who are young parents, that your, your children, you need to teach them work because it's a blessing. Because when they go to college, they will find their own identity, their work, and see to it that we should instill in their mind that this work is a gift from God. We need to be grateful for this work. And in return, I will ask Pastor Cabazon in, in the area, because it is given by God, therefore God requires a quality of work. Because it is given to us, we are responsible for quality work. Oh, I love my work as a teacher. I always say that. See to it, na, you understand why you are here? You are here to study because I'm a teacher. You are not coming here for looking for sweet type. Those are measuring the minors. And there are people who also, when they work, actually this is their work, but they have so many agenda, other things there, they cannot focus the gift that God has given them. And so let's go now to the quality. How do we instill to our children, newly married, those who have married, uh, already married, have children, how do we instill quality? Because God always looked for a quality in all our work. Whether it is, because in the Bible there's no such thing as secular or division between secular and secret. All work, regardless of it, is really secret. And we need to understand that in our mind. We need to understand that, that every work really is secret. If we remove this idea, we entertain that our work is not quality because it's not secret. But when it is quality because it is secret, then we are doing work that is the finest we can offer. Right? So, Pastor Kabason, what is your thoughts about quality? Yeah, it's very important to consider the creation. When God created those things, the comment was this, and it was good, and everything was good. So everything God does is always good. So here, being God as our model, as his children, we must model and our work should be done accordingly. If we will read Exodus, uh, Moses was uh, expert in uh, pitching a tent. But here in this uh, chapter, the instruction to Moses was very detailed. It means that God is requiring us to render a work that is acceptable and in its quality. Excellent. Precise. Precise. Perfect. Perfect. And, and detailed. Yeah. The measurement. Uh, yeah, the measurement. The arrangement. The, the designs. The things that we should be put in there. The harmony. The harmony. All is there. Those who will engrave the furnitures, those who will lead the choir, they were all selected. So these are good points in which we need to understand that all our, our viewers, we need to understand quality of work is required by God because it is a sacred work. So if there are really important in detail because God is interested in detail, God also is interested in general, meaning to say all kinds of work, if it is a general work, it is a general, but when it is a detailed and precise and accurate, then we must do it because that is the gift of God. And he has given us that gift to be such with quality. Now let's move to the other part of the lesson that he says. When we work, do it with all your mind. Your mind. Yes. So now it's your turn. Um, I believe that uh, one of our models in the Bible, my, one of my favorite Bible characters is Daniel. Daniel is an exemplification of an excellent work ethics. Mm -hmm. Even though people around, those who are jealous to him, they're looking for loopholes or anything negative from his work, but they could not see one. So it means when you are doing your work excellently, it is just like putting your signature in it, 
At the same time, it is a witness to the God that you serve. Whether, wherever you work, whether in private, yes. in our church, organizations, wherever it is, when people see you, your work, they see something different in you, and, it, and people will ask, will know, who is this with such excellent work? Even when others are, when others are not watching, even when it is an extended work, it is not within that bounds of time or requirement because you love what you're working, because you want to serve the Lord. The point of reference always, since what you have is a gift from God, that work is a gift from God, the skills coupled with that work all came from God. Therefore, nothing came from us and so we use it for the glory of God. And we can only do that when our work is excellent. Okay. That's a very timely uh, points in understanding. Now, let me share you a little bit. Because in the Hebrew mind, worship and work are one and they are sacred. When you work, is a sacred. When you worship, is sacred. The same. But the Hebrew mind changed that. The, the Greek mind. To the Greek mind, worship is sacred. Work is secular. And this is the pervading concept throughout the whole world today. Oh, oh, we know because you oh, is secular. No, that is not. But in fact, I, I'll give you some text. For example, Genesis 2.15. The Lord has not caused because there was no to till in the ground. To work in Hebrew is abuda. And also, if you look at Genesis 2.15, to tend it, the man to tend it, to keep it, the Hebrew word is abuda. So it is an integration of faith and work and worship because if you look at Exodus 8.1, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses, okay? Uh, say to, go to Pharaoh and say to him, the say to the Lord, let my people go and serve and worship me in the mountain. The Hebrew word is abuda, meaning to say, worship, abuda, work and worship is the same. That's why you find that in the Old Testament, the, the priests serve in the sanctuary, the military serve the army, the soldier, serve in the military, the same. There's no such thing as secular and secret. So this today, the pervading, which is we are deceived throughout the whole world, that our work is secular. That's why I want to emphasize that our work should be our place of missionary. Yeah. That's our mission. So, because many wants to work with significant. They say, my work is not I, I like evangelism, pastoral, winning soul, church building. But don't you know, because you, our work is secular, then that is your place of witnessing. I, I would like that in, in what happened. It is a way of witnessing. It's not drudgery. It's not uh, making you putting down. We, we need to enjoy because that's the place. That's why we need to kind to people who will meet on us and everywhere in our work. Because that is a place of our missionary. Because that is secret. Right? What, what is missionary in janitor? I, I see a lot of theological points. He cleans. If without janitor, our world stinks. And I appreciate that because next to cleanliness is what? Godliness. Godliness. This is holistic understanding of work and worship. Okay? So, so towards the end, let, let, let's discuss our lesson towards the end because it tells us that towards the end that yeah, there is a term there that the Creator wants us to understand this life. Whatever your hands find it to do, Yeah. So, what is your understanding on this uh, doing with all? Pastor Kabasong, any word? My understanding of doing our work with all our mind. It means to say that you work for the glory of God. You work with your, your best ability. 
your best performance, the best attitude should be displayed, and your work ethics. Doing with all your might, it means an excellent work. You have put in your best. You have invested time doing it. You really devote effort, much effort, in accomplishing that task. It is not just an easy work, but it really, it was done really in a manner that you will not regret. So, thank you. So, meaning to say, now, what are the applications? Let's put now our lesson into application the way we work. As we said, we love our work because it's a gift from God. It is a sacred. So, when it is a sacred, let us see to it that the, the thing we do is really on a Christian. Uh, let me read uh, a thing here. For example, uh, it says there in... Uh, uh, I have a note here where... Uh, Paul is saying, when you work, the ultimately, whom do we render our work? To the company? To the institution? To your boss? Paul says, not with eye service, as men placer, but as band servants of Christ, doing the will of God from heart, with a good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Did you get the point? I think this is a very important application that we need to understand. Do not work with eye service. In other words, lip service. My lip service, there is also eye service. Pero minsan, walang service. <laughs> diba? So what does it mean here? Because our work my work, I do it the best. I enjoy it because it's a gift. Because I'm not doing it to the institution, but I'm doing I'm doing it to the institution. But actually, in the end, the ultimate, it is I do it for God. This is what Paul is saying. So we need to understand, okay, brothers and sisters, that it is a very important theological aspect that when we do work. Regardless of what is that work, we see God in the end. And in the beginning, the giver and the end because it goes back to him. So, uh, I would like you to, 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 to help me uh, let our brothers and sisters that when we work, not really, diba? Pag may boss tayo, grabe ang energy natin. Pag wala ang boss, nawawala ang energy. So how can we, <laughs> we, we, we do this? Because that's part of what Pastor Cabazon, the work ethics. Hey, Ma'am Piliado Mon. Yeah, I would like to share with you uh, from the statement of Miss um, Ellen G. White from the Book of Education, Chapter 4. It is and his ambition to inspire them with principles of truth, obedience, honor, integrity, and purity. Principles that will make them a positive force for the stability and uplifting of society. So she was advising us to do this wherever we are. So he desires them above all else to learn life's great lesson to, be, to have a selfish service. I think that's what's the main goal of our lesson for me, that to work is to render our unselfish service. That's what uh, Pastor was saying a while ago. And another thing, Pastor, Okay, okay. connection with that one and also she gave us a method of what kind of work we need to do uh, so that we could minister in our workplace at the same time so it states here in testimonies for the church chapter 9 by visiting the people talking with them praying with them sympathizing with them you will win their hearts this is the highest missionary work that you can do to your workplace and she stated at, at the very end, be sure to work in a way that will remove prejudice instead of creating it as one of them. It's very clear that our attitude, our character should be reflect the character of God wherever we are in our workplace, to our supervisor, to our co-workers, to our client as well. 
Okay, in the last round, uh, would you give uh, Dr. Pareñas your last uh, words about our the on the lesson and then Pastor Cabazon then I'm going to wrap it up and then we end our lesson uh, since work is a gift from God before the fall and after the fall we need to recognize that that is part of the uniqueness of Adventist education. We have our work education program because we want to teach our students to value work, to engage in work, to love work, and not to feel that working is heavy and working is just for money. But we want to instill among our students that's why we have our work student program. This is one of our unique, um, unique feature in our Adventist education. Because what I have read, I, have, I was able to download a document from General Conference about work education program. And I have found, actually it is part of our lesson in Friday. But I have it here. Um, in Patriarchs and Prophets, let me read from Friday lesson. I think uh, this, is, this should be part of um, the curriculum in our work education program, wherein at the beginning, we need to lay the foundation of our work education program. What's the purpose? Are we just giving them opportunity to work and study? or it is beyond the opportunity to study while working. Because according to Ellen White in Patriarchs and Prophets, it says here, the life of toil and care, which was henceforth to be man's, man's lot, was appointed in love. So it was really designed, work was really designed as a manifestation of God's love. It was a discipline rendered needful by his sin, because of sin. It was designed that work should be part of man's restoration to the lost image of God. To place a check upon the indulgence of appetite and passion. To develop habits of self-control. It was a part of God's great plan for man's recovery from the ruin and degradation of sin. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 60. And in chapter 14, in Patriarchs and Prophets, uh, about describing or the story about uh, the destruction of Sodom. Uh, during that time, when uh, just before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were so prosperous. Just little work, and then they earned so much. And so people at that time, people at that time, their useless idol life made them a prey to Satan's temptations and they defaced the image of God and became satanic rather than divine. Idleness is the greatest curse that can fall upon men for vice and crime follow in its train. With little thought of labor, every want of life could be supplied and the whole year seemed one round of festivity. That was the condition before. Idleness and riches make the heart hard that has never been oppressed by want or burdened by sorrow. The love of pleasure was fostered by wealth and leisure. Yeah, when you just work a little and then a lots, lots of money, then you will spend more time in leisure, in pleasure. So that's what happened to them. Behold, says the prophet, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughter. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Meaning, when, when we do not engage in work, we engage more in idleness. That's where Satan comes in. But when we work, knowing that we're serving the Lord, there's no room for idleness. And actually, according to Ellen White, that's the remedy of sin when it came in, in the Garden of Eden. 
one of the remedies of sin is labor. Meaning we need to let our students, our children, our church by heart, learn by heart that it came as a gift to solve sin among humanity. To restore the lost image of God in men while we engage in, in labor because it is his gift. Okay, that is a very piercing truth because the environment today work less, get more. And we need to follow still the blueprint of what God has said. Let's work, be busy, because when we are busy, because an idle mind is the workshop of the devil. And in fact, Ellen White is saying here in, in Education 220 that this work is a part of God's plan for recovery. To recover us from our what we lost and we need to instill that that's why when we understand that the work is secret we can only function that but when we see our work is secular uh, that would be a uh, dangerous and so uh, last word pastor Cabazon uh, in what is now the theological implication of our work today meaning to say what I'm asking is that if God has given this what is the message to all people who will work especially Christian we don't mind those but Christian our understanding of work should be distinct and we understand what God has for us as workers of Christ we should always bear in our minds that we are co-laborers with him. That we are not just performing our work because of necessity. Let's do it. Let's us render our work in a manner that will really reflect the one we serve, who is the head of the work. Because our attitude, our work ethics in the workplace determines or a reflection of our spirituality, our relationship with Jesus. If our work is a mess, then it reflects your spirituality. So, work is a blessing, it's a gift from God. We can only do the work, render the work in acceptable manner when we enjoy first the relationship with the head of the work. Ellen White says, it is the best source of happiness. But others don't think that way. So the Christian should have a mind. I like what Paul says, we have the mind of Christ. When we have the mind of Christ, we understand our work. And so, uh, we want to thank you for this beautiful lesson that has given us. And it's really a challenge. Okay? Uh, I guess one point that came to my mind, actually Satan knows that work is a gift. That's why he distorted work actually. Either you are idle, under work, or too much work, overwork. <laughs> that God's children no longer enjoy work when they are overworked, too much work is placed upon them. At the same time, when they are underworked, they are idle, and so sin comes in, more pleasure, more time for the devil to come in. Therefore, we need to balance work in our life. That's why in Galatians, the one that I read, Galatians 5, 22 to 26, In work, we develop the fruit of the Spirit. We manifest the fruit of the Spirit. Actually, the last, temperance, right? When we don't have temperance, and yet we just do work and work because we need, we need to accomplish much. I don't know why, we're, why we, we try to accomplish much when there's only eight to nine hours working time and we, all, we have a work overtime, to the point that 
we sacrifice our health, we sacrifice relationship. Therefore, since Satan knows that this work is really a gift, he distorted it, and that we should be careful when, when we do our work. Okay, let me wrap up. The work is a gift, it's God's ideal. And we know that this is sacred. And we do our best because we are not working in the institution, in the company. Yes, that is literal. But in the end, we are in there it to the Lord. So quality of work is important. And so, let me read Ecclesiastes. He says there in 5, 18 to 20, It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor, which he toiled the son all the days of life that God gave him. What's that? Enjoy the good of his labor, which God gave him. For every man whom God has given riches, wealth, and given power to it to receive. Meaning to say, this is also our way of raising our status. Because when we work, we have something. Because God who provides the wealth and the strength. Besides that, he says, Because God keeps him busy with the joy of his heart. I like that. I'm so busy, really busy. But I enjoy it because I know it is for God. If this is our attitude towards our work, what a beautiful workplace that we can find in a world. And we need to understand that sometimes that, what you said, sometimes our work, lacking, overwork, that is Satan's way. We lost temperance because in everything we should be temperance in all things. And besides that, you, we know already that there are personality in the workplace that seemingly close quotation mark toxic. We need to understand toxic people in the workplace. Focus on what is good rather than what is toxic. Although we are effective sometimes with the toxic, but that is not what we are calling. Because we are in God's work. So we must focus on. I, I like Nehemiah. There's a lot of toxic people there, but he says, I'm working for the Lord. That should be our attitude. And so, thank you, Dr. Cabazon, Dr. Culiado, Dr. Pariñas for uh, this very beautiful lesson. And we want uh, Dr. Pariñas to close this with a closing prayer. Let us pray. Our dear God, our loving Father in heaven, the author of work as a gift to man. We thank you, Father, for teaching us today, for making us understand that work was given as a gift from you. May we treasure this gift, Father, that as we do our work, may it be a signature of our loving Creator, Amen. the one that instituted work in the Garden of Eden. May it be there, Lord, that we will witness for you. Our work is a manifestation as well of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, that in our workplace there may be challenges, but Lord, help us to become like you more and more each day as we work with one another with love, with consideration for those who are weaker. Oh Lord, may you also bless our school administrators that as they revisit our work education programs to teach our young people to value work and develop work ethics, to go out from school as a as missionary to serve you not lacking in anything but excellent in your in work oh lord thank you so much bless all those who heard who listened to this re lesson review may we value work and at the same time may we enjoy the fruit of our labor because it is your gift thank you heavenly father for hearing our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.